So you didn't ask for this, but I'm going to tell you everything that I know about choosing your next memory card. And when we're done, I'll offer some recommendations on the cards that I use every day. If you're a regular reader of photography blogs, most of them will have some kind of list of essential items that you need to keep in your camera bag. One of the items on that list will always be something along the lines of extra memory cards. Now as an aside, but also related to the same subject, you'll also come across articles which direct you to grow up and shoot raw format. Many, well actually most photographers that are professionals will claim that you can't be a real photographer if you shoot JPEG. I shoot JPEG. You know, it's one of the great myths of digital photography that JPEG images are so far inferior to RAW as to make them unsuitable for professional work. So much so that it has been adopted as gospel by both photographers and editors alike. Many of them that don't have any background in technology whatsoever. JPEG is different from RAW, that's for sure. Each format has advantages and disadvantages. But to automatically consider JPEG files unsuitable for professional work across the board, it's simply wrong. Anyone who claims this is their truth is either not knowledgeable about how the compression and the raw and JPEG files work, or they just haven't considered all the situations where JPEG file formats are simply a better choice than raw. All right, so far so good. Maybe you have a trip coming up and remember this list of photography essentials from that blog you read. Or maybe you've grown up and you've begun to shoot in the raw file format, but you've noticed that raw files occupy, occupy three times as much space as the JPEGs did. One of the downsides of shooting raw is that you must either use larger capacity cards or you've got to use more of them. So armed with this new knowledge, you head down to the local big box store in search of a new memory card, or maybe two. You never thought that there might be too many options for you to easily decide upon. You just thought that maybe there were different storage capacities. 8, 16, 32, maybe 64 gigabytes. You assume you'd stand at the counter or in front of your computer, ready to make an easy and quick purchase. Of course then, when you're about to choose your new memory card, you realize, perhaps too late, that there are many different kinds and types of memory cards. There are so many, more than you had ever imagined. Am I wrong? Well, luckily you're watching this video now and I'm gonna help you become an expert or at least an expert on the subject for the next time that you go to get your new memory card. So should you get a large volume or should you get multiple smaller capacity cards? This is the first question that you ask yourself. Most articles I have read recommend that you get several small capacity cards. Losing a card or having a card get corrupted can hurt. If you have several smaller cards, you might avoid losing all the shots that you've taken since your photos will be spread across several different ones. However, if you're disorganized and have a tendency to lose things, it might be difficult for you to handle yourself with more than one card. These are pretty small. Perhaps you should cross your fingers and work with a couple of cards that have greater capacity. So before you leave home, look at the specifications of your camera to see what type of cards your camera supports. Your manual will tell you what the maximum capacity and what the maximum speed your camera will accept. It will also tell you the minimums. Not all cards are compatible with all cameras. Sometimes your new card will not be recognized by your camera. These cards can be expensive, so you need to make sure that you're getting the right one. So don't waste your time or your money. Before you buy, know what kind of cards are supported by your camera. If necessary, take your manual into the store with you and let one of the salespeople help you. Now let's talk about some of the basic information which will help you with selecting your next memory card. And I'll try not to get into too many technicalities. So let's talk about the different types of cards that are out there. For prosumer digital cameras, most likely you need an SD or secure digital or SD8C secure digital high capacity card. Many professional cameras use CF cards, but we're going to skip right over those. Perhaps we'll talk about those in another video. 
SDHC cards are the improved versions of the SD cards. In general, SDHC cards are newer and more capable of providing faster write and read speeds and higher capacity than the earlier SD cards. That does not mean that there are no fast or good SD cards though. A card's suitability for your situation will depend on the model of card and your camera's needs, but in general, you just need to know that an SDHC card is an approved version of an SD card. Let's talk about capacity. This is probably the feature that most folks have in mind when they go shopping for a new memory card. Once you have identified the, what the maximum capacity or size card is that your camera brand or model accepts, then you know what the maximum capacity is that you will need to be looking for. And like I said before, many photographers will recommend that you have more than one card of a lower capacity rather than just one card with a large capacity. However, if you've decided to shoot in RAW or you've used smaller cards and have already decided that you need to increase your capacity, then you've already got an approximate idea of what the minimum and maximum size cards are that you need. Now let's talk about card speed. The speed of a memory card refers to the speed of writing and reading information, you know, your pictures and your videos, to the card. It's very important that you seriously consider this if you're often shooting stills in burst mode like at sports or if you shoot video because these are situations where you're going to need a faster card. If your camera supports SDHC format, it's also likely to work properly with an SD card, but remember that a card with slower performance can make your camera stall out. That is, your camera might technically be able to shoot a high frame rate per second, but if your card is slow, the performance of the camera will suffer and you'll not be able to shoot the camera's maximum frame rate. On the other hand, if your camera supports SDHC but you're not going to shoot RAW and bursts or if your HD video isn't a priority for you, well, you're better off keeping your money in order to invest in something else. A good SD card might just be fine for what you need. Cards are marked on their packages as being of a certain class. Looking at a card's class helps you determine what you can expect performance-wise from a memory card. Here are the classes of different SDHC memory cards and their corresponding minimum transfer speeds at which they can read and write information. A Class 2 SDHC card will write 2 megabytes per second minimum. A Class 4 card will write a minimum of 4 megabytes per second to the card. A Class 6, 6 megabytes per second minimum. And Class 10 will write 10 megabytes per second at its slowest speed. If you're considering an SD card, note that the numbers correspond to the maximum speed at which a card can read or write information in that situation. No reference is made to the minimum read-write speed as, as is in the case with the SD8C card. That's just something to be aware of. So let's talk about card brands now. There are many brands on the market with very different prices. Unfortunately, it's almost always the case that the very cheap cards are rarely good. So try to focus on well-known brands and read the reviews for the cards on Amazon to make sure what you're buying is really what you think. At the end of this video, I'll suggest some options for you. So let's talk about caring for your cards. You will have to replace your memory cards if you don't care for them properly. So I'm going to give you a few tips that will help you get the best life possible with your memory card. Keep them protected in some kind of a case. Not only will this help you avoid them getting scratched or dirty, it will help you keep them organized and prevent them from getting lost. I've got these two ProMaster weatherproof memory card cases with me. I always have them in my bag. So the blue one is where I keep freshly formatted cards. The red case is where I keep cards that have already been used that need to be uploaded to a computer or to an external hard drive. I pick these up at Academy close to my house, but you can get them on Amazon for about 20 bucks each. Be sure to eject the cards properly once you've downloaded them to your computer. Do not delete photos from the camera because if you do that, you're going to reduce the lifetime of the card itself. It's preferable to delete all the photos once you've successfully downloaded them to your computer. In order to delete the photos, just format the card in the camera. Don't do it in the computer. Of course, treat your card with care. Don't force it in when you're inserting it into your computer or your card reader or removing it from the camera or other devices. 
One last tip, don't get obsessed about these cars. Capacities and speeds are always increasing every few months. If the price of a car that you want seems like it's too expensive, well then wait a couple of months to see if you can either find it on sale or if the price comes down. But if you can't wait, you just need to buy it, well then go ahead and get the card and don't worry about being the last one to get the card before the price drop or before a feature improvement. I can assure you that when you're buying stuff in tech, a newer, better, cheaper version is always right around the corner. Okay, so what do I recommend? So if you want to get a good memory card, you can try any of the ones that I use. All of them work great as long as all you need is an SD. Well, I'll take that back. The iFi Mobi Pros, and this is actually a, uh, um, an iFi Explorer. I've got an Explorer X2 here too. These are eight gigabyte cards. I love these to death. Now, the iFi cards, the Mobi Pros themselves, let you uh, connect your, your, to your camera via Wi-Fi when you're out in the field or, or connect to your computer or, or mobile device. They automatically download the pictures onto your computer or mobile device while you're shooting it, doing it on the fly. So you're going to find that with the iFi, even if your camera's got Wi-Fi built into it, you're going to find that the iFi Wi-Fi connectivity works much better than the connectivity you have in your camera. It also takes all the pain out of uploading your pictures to your device because it does it for you on the fly. The other cards I use are SanDisk cards. I also use Delkin device cards. These are SD class 10, 32 gigabytes. I use these across all of my uh, cameras except for my two Vixia minis, which actually are two of the cameras I'm using to record this podcast with. In the Vixias, I use 64 gigabyte SanDisk Class 10 cards. It's true that you know by doing that in the long run, I risk uh, I run the risk of losing everything in a shoot because I do shoot in JPEG and I can get a lot of photos onto a card before I've got to switch them out. Part of me is frankly just taking a chance, uh, mainly because I've never had a card and a camera fail on me. But the cautious part of me makes sure that I'm always shooting with at least two cameras. So if a card in one camera does happen to get corrupted, well, at least I've got the shots on the other camera. To be a little bit more cautious, when I think about it, I'll take a card out of my camera during a break in the shoot and back it up onto a self-powered Western Digital wireless hard drive. These things accept SD slot cards. They will automatically back up your memory card without needing to plug in a computer to them. Um, because they're self-powered, they've got a battery in them. I used to use the hyperdrive for the same purpose, uh, but the Western Digital is multifunctional. It works as a regular hard drive. Also, I can connect to the, my iPhone and my iPad with that as well. Um, it also just copies faster than the hyperdrive. I'm not sure if I said that or not. So usually on a trip, whenever I have to go travel, I'll take two of those, those Western Digital wireless hard drives with me. Um, in the field, I will copy my pictures onto this as the day goes by. When I get back to a hotel room or when we're driving back to the hotel, um, what I'll do is I'll take those cards and I'll copy them onto the second Western Digital hard drive. Um, and then as a additional security measure, um, what I'll do is I will package one of them up and I'll FedEx or overnight it to myself when the day that we're leaving uh, to make sure that if something happens to my luggage on the way home that at least I've got a hard drive with pictures on it um, waiting for me whenever I get home, you know, usually a couple of days after I get home. So uh, when it comes to brands, uh, while I've tried several of them, I've consistently used Delkin and SanDisk memory cards for well over a decade uh, with literally not a single data failure. Um, now these are physically fragile, um, just like any SD or SDHC card, so it is likely to wear down eventually. And of course that, that depends on how you treat them. But as is the case with all of my gear, I don't purposely treat my gear badly, but I certainly don't go out of my way to treat it like it's irreplaceable either. Uh, the SD cards are usually a victim of normal wear and tear on my shoots. They're usually the first ones to go, but it's because they break apart. Most photographers are going to gasp, but I have some cards that are over seven years old that are still in regular rotation. Uh, CF cards that I used, used to use in my can Canon before I switched over to mirrorless, the CF cards are the, the CF cards are practically indestructible. The the SDs and the SDHCs are not. But if you do treat them well, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get several years of good use out of a brand name card.
I hope these basic tips help you when you're going out to buy your next memory card. Uh, I wish that I knew all this whenever I was starting out if for no other reason that I could have saved some money and either used it to buy more cards to give me some redundancy or maybe buy a couple of more burritos. So do me a favor, if you've got an opinion about what kind of cards you think people should be buying or if you have any uh, additional information you can give out to our viewers, do me a favor and leave that in the comments below. Certainly I would ask that if you found this video vi uh, valuable that you would like it. That helps me out quite a bit. Uh, we'll see you next time.